All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. This is a thrilling, exciting story of the sea, the vast, stormy sea, which will be a place of high adventure until the end of time. This adventurous story tells of the hardships and perils of whaling, the mystery of hunting for buried treasure, and the dangers of storms at sea and mutiny. Well, boys and girls, as you can see, the cruise of the Paul Parrot will be packed with thrills from start to finish. Now, first of all, we want to introduce the principal characters you'll get to know in this new and exciting series. First, there's Captain Roy Dalton himself, master of the ship, and he's talking to his friend and first mate of the Paul Parrot, George Wainwright. You can see for yourself that there's something afoot on this cruise. George Wainwright, I ask you as my friend, will you sign these first mate's papers? Aye, it is then, Roy, mate. But if it weren't for you, Roy Dalton, I'd never sign. Now we'll find just what is behind it all. And here are the two characters that you boys and girls will like best of all, the little boy and girl in our story. And do they have exciting adventures aboard the Paul Parrot? It's Johnny Robbins and little Sue Grange. Gosh, Sue, what are we going to do? That man is going to try to kill the captain. Well, Johnny, there's only one thing we can do. We've got to get up to the captain's cabin before he does. Come on, run! Doesn't that sound like excitement? And here is the mysterious Spaniard who causes all the trouble aboard the Paul Parrot. He's talking to Ezra Grange, the owner of the Paul Parrot, the other man of mystery on the cruise. Now, Senor Grange, be sensible. I know as much about this treasure as you do. Why not let us be partners instead of enemies? Listen to me, you blackguard. I won't be a partner with you in any kind of venture. Uh, one of us is suddenly going to disappear from this ship, and it isn't going to be me. Well, that sounds like more excitement. And last of all, here is old Dickon, the one-legged sailor, talking to his pet, the ship's mascot, after whom the ship has been named, Paul Parrot himself. I tell you, Paul, there's going to be more trouble on this cruise than the time I lost this pig leg of mine. Yes, sir, I just feels it in me bones. Ah, sailor, beware! Sailor, take care! There's dirty work afoot! Ah. There you are, you've met our principal characters. Now let's start on our yarn. Our story opens in the spring of 1858, in the New England town of New Bedford, the great center of the whaling industry. Roy Dalton, a true seaman and as brave a man as ever sailed the deep, has just received his master's papers. He is walking on one of the streets leading to the New Bedford waterfront when he runs into an old acquaintance. And a hard cruise, and a cruise before the gate. Hold, I think that's... Ahoy, he too, mate. <laughs> well, blow me down, Roy Dalton. Say, I thought you were at sea. I thought you signed as first mate on the Minabelle out of Boston. Oh, vast, it's good to see you again, George. You're behind schedule a bit. The Minabelle laid up for repairs a month ago. Will you be sailing with her again? I will not, George. I've got my own future to look forward to. I've got my master's papers. What? A full-fledged skipper? Great saints, Roy, you've done well. And next you'll be telling me you own a trim little clipper that's setting sail tonight. Oh, that'll all come. That'll all come later. Right now, but look, this'll tell you what ship I'm sailing on. See this one-legged sailor coming down the dock with a parrot on his shoulder? Yes, but what has that to do with... Hi there, Dickon. Aye, aye, Captain Dalton. I'm just taking our blooming mascot for an errand, you might say. Uh, greet the gentleman, Paul. Ah, a mass there. Stand by the way anchor, you lubbers. A fine breeze has sprung up. Ah. <laughs> I'm afraid that it's a very courteous manner of greeting a superior officer, sir. You know, I never could teach the swab any manners. Well, oh, that's all right, Dickon. He's a smart bird at that. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. But, Roy, that parrot, that's the mascot of the ship Paul Parrot. Right you are, George. I'm signing on with Grange and Sons to man the Paul Parrot for them. Grange and Sons? You're a skipper on a whaler? A vast man. You sound like that's a crime. What's wrong with being a skipper on a whaler? But you've been a clean sailor all your life. You've never had anything to do with whaling. You know what a dirty trade it is. Why, most of the men in the crew are drawn from the worst that can be dragged up and cheated or shanghaied into shipping on a whaler. No man in his right mind ever sailed on a whaling ship yet if he knew plainly what he was in for. I'll grant you it is hard work to man a whaler. Yet the whales must be caught to keep all New England busy with the selling of their oil. And I, as captain, am to have the choosing of my own crew. What difference do you find in that? I'll pick up no dock rats and scum of the waterfront. I'll pick real seamen, everyone a true man. On the salaries that whalers pay? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Roy. But I'm paying them a fair salary. I'm to give my men $200 in advance and an equal share in the profits after the owners and the chief officers get theirs. Two hundred in advance? Uh, how much are you deducting from that for agents' fees and expenses? 
By the time that's all done, the poor wretches will be owing you $10 apiece. That $200 is named after those fees have been deducted. And are your hands getting $200 in advance, in truth? The truth it is. And there's a nice bunk open for you as first mate. Uh, the day that sees me a mate on a whaling ship will also see me go down to Davy Jones. I wouldn't go whaling for a king's ransom. George Wainwright, you're making a great mistake. This isn't another dirty whaling cruise. As captain, I'll treat my men fair. And the good salaries will attract true seamen. And not the trash most whalers ship. Uh, this doesn't sound to me like a whaling cruise at all. Yet this Grange outfit is an agency that goes in entirely for whale oil, I know. They're a mighty fine company, George. One of the younger sons, Ezra, is even shipping with me. So he can learn the game from the inside, as he says. So, one of the owners is shipping along. Uh, mark my words, Roy. This is no ordinary cruise. And the ship is the Paul Parrot, eh? The Paul Parrot it is. And a mighty trim and seaworthy three-master she is. Aye, aye, it's a very trim craft. Has she been all fitted for the voyage? She sails in three days. And, George, the mate's bunk is still empty. It can stay empty. But I doubt if whaling is all there is to this cruise. I think there's something back of it. Because think, mate... I I beg your pardon, senores. I did not see you when I bump into you. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Who is that man? I've seen him before. And what made him run into me like that? Why, look. He's got a paper in his hand. Wait, I think I... Heave to there. Stop or I'll fire. Oh, pardon, senor. But what is the cause of this, senor? Give me that paper. Oh, uh, but, senor... Give me that paper. See, si, senor, if I must... Hand it over. Aha, uh -huh. just as I thought. My master's papers. He picked my pocket when he rammed into me broadside. Stop him, Roy, stop him. Fire after him. He's running off. And I have no gun. I said I'd fire just to frighten him. Now, why did he take those papers of yours? I told you there was something behind this whaling cruise. Ah, <laughs> George, you're getting to be an old woman with that I told you so of yours. But listen, you were always a good hand at a dangerous venture. Why not ship as my first mate and see if there's anything behind this cruise? Roy, I would. If your ship weren't a whaler. But that runs my plans aground right there. Oh, I say there, Captain Dalton. Well, blow me down. It's Mr. Ezra Grange. Good morning, sir. Uh, Captain, have you hired all the hands? Not quite, sir. There's a few to be put on. Well, you're doing your utmost to get the best now. Remember, spare no expense to get the best seamen and whalers you can. I think you'll be highly satisfied with the crew, sir. The ones I have signed on are able hands, all. Good, good. Well, Captain, the ship's just about fitted. We sail in three days sharp. Aye, Mr. Grange. Everything will be ready and ship shape. Very good, very good. My father will be pleased. So, that's the owner's son who's shipping on your voyage to see the inside of the game. Aye, mate, that's the man. Listen, I know the Granges, and they're all as close-fisted as any New England ship owner could be. This young un is no exception. They're too anxious to spend money on this trip to make it look like an ordinary one. Mate... There's mystery in the wind. Ah, oh, you were always one to have a weather eye for mystery when there wasn't any. But remember, that job of mate is still... What was that? A vast someone shot at me. The bullet whizzed right by my ear. Where did young Ezra Grange go to? He's disappeared, just like the dark Spaniard who rammed me. Look, there's somebody lurking behind that whale oil cask over there. Hard to port. I think the lubber's going to shoot again. <coughs> uh, did oh. he get you, mate? Quick, duck behind these blooming casings. Hmm. He just dicked my forearm, George. Nothing serious. Scarcely do blood. And neither of us with a gun blow the luck. Let's creep around these cases. Maybe we can surprise him from behind. Aye, aye, matey. You lead. Softly. Softly now. Come on. Follow. I'm right on your heels. Now behind that stack of sails. Run for it. I don't think he saw us. Now for those whale oil casks. Come on, George. Made it. Now he's, he's right around that one. Ah, oh, you dirty rat, we've got you now. We'll let this for that belaying pin. I'll teach him a thing or two. Store that shooting, you swap. Oh! Avast, come here. Why, you stop or I'll throw this belaying pin. Ah, uh, missed him. He got away. Oh, blast it all. He's a strong monkey. It's the same Spanish-looking fellow that tried to steal my papers a while ago. Roy, you're not going to stay healthy if this sort of thing keeps up. We've got to get to the bottom of it. What you need is somebody to work with you. You can see for yourself there's something to put in this cruise, George Wainwright. I ask you as my friend, will you sign these first mate's papers? Well, aye it is then, Roy, mate. But if it weren't for you, I'd never sign to be a mate on a smelly whaler. Yes, I know, I know. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't do this. 
If it weren't for the mystery on this cruise, you mean. But hurry on and sign up, you blasted landlubber, before somebody shoots off an ear of mine. Boys and girls, this certainly does look exciting. A whaling cruise is always one of the most adventuresome and exciting things in the world anyway. And with unexpected shots coming any moment or attempted stealings of valuable papers by suspicious-looking men, it ought to be more than exciting. In the next of this thrilling series of adventures in the cruise of the Paul Parrot, we'll find out just who this dark-complexioned stranger is. And we'll also meet one of the characters you'll like best of all, little Sue Grange, who is really going to get mixed up in this thrilling story. Be sure not to miss even one of these exciting adventures on the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward.